All right, guys, Disney just announced earnings last week. We did a great video. I hope you caught it. If you don't, if you don't get those, subscribe to our channel. We do earnings announcements every week when big companies re report, and it's a lot of fun for us. So on this video, we're going to go over Disney. We're going to go over the eight pillars that have made us oh so famous. We're going to go over some bull and bear cases. We're going to do our analyst estimates. Then we're going to do the stock analyzer tool, which is super important. It's the most important part of our software because it allows us to make assumptions about the future and it'll tell us what price we need to pay today for the company because that's all that should matter to you. What price am I paying? Now, obviously, you have to take the whole story of Disney along with it. But this is a very popular video because we got a lot of people saying, Disney's dead, it's too woke, etc. And that's what you want to hear when companies are dropping in price. Because remember, News follows the stock price, not the other way around. And when Disney was at $200 a share, it was the best thing since sliced bread. And now it's a lot lower. So let's pull it up in our software right now and see what is going on. Oh, it's getting beaten up again, Mo. It's at $88 a share. So some things here. Market cap of $161 billion. Now, I want you to remember, whether you're a beginning investor or an advanced investor, there's something as video for everybody. So watch it all the way through. And we're going to sit here and go through Disney and some of the attributes for it. So first off, $161 billion market cap. If you want to buy every share on the market, that's what you got to pay. All right. It's got a PE right now of 71 and a five-year PE of 45. However, this is where I think the key is for Disney. Mo, look at this profit margin right now. 2.6%. Less than three. I thought it was three. But... If you go back to like 20 years, the average profit margin is like 14 or 15%. And the years before COVID, they were upwards of 20%. So the question you have to ask yourself is, where's their real profit margin going to end up? You know, in our community up here, one of our users was telling me, Paul, I think Disney's dead. I think they're, they do a terrible job making, making uh, movies. I think this is going to be very difficult. And he said, I don't think they're getting back to 20%, which I said to him, fair enough. But I, I still think that 2.6 is still very low. 4.8% includes COVID in there. Mm -hmm. So my question is, can they get back to 12 or 13, 14%? That's a big part of it, right, Mo? Yeah, yeah. All right, so they... price of free cash flow is terrible. Return on, every one of these numbers, I think, are pretty bad. Yeah, everything's going to Except for this, 48% gross margin. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. And look at their revenue, Mo. This is the interesting part. Their revenue is freaking huge. They have higher revenue than they did before COVID. They have record revenue. For a company that's dead, that's pretty impressive. Mo, can you give us some bull and bear cases? Obviously, uh, there's probably more bear cases now because the stock is down. But what are some bull and bear cases for Disney? So, of course, the big bull case. And honestly, I don't think this is really a bull case yet. They signed that deal with Penn Gaming. Yeah, because Disney owns ESP, ESPN. AB, ABC, which owns ESPN, and owns all these things. Yep, so Penn Gaming went to ESPN. It was a 10-year deal with an option for a 10-year extension after that 10 years. And it was $1.5 billion. $1.5 in cash payments to ESPN over the decade and grant ESPN $500 million in warrants to buy 31.8 million of Penn Common Stock. Okay. Big win for Barstool Sports. <laughs> you just couldn't wait to say couldn't that. Couldn't wait to say it. Domestic average revenue per user for Disney Plus increased 17% year over year. Now, Disney Plus is still a money loser. It is, and here I pulled this up. Um, this is the quarter-to-quarter -quarter moves of Disney Plus subscribers worldwide. So you can see that it's starting to decline. Yep. But at what point does it... I, I have to think that they're around a stabilization point, wouldn't you think? Yeah. You know, Mo, you got to look at... So you look at all these streaming services, and the thing that Disney Plus has that's so beneficial is they have the content. Yeah. They make their own content. And they can monetize the heck out of it. It's yeah. like a vicious cycle of monetization. So imagine a world in which... They start releasing movies just fully on Disney Plus, and you have to have Disney Plus, but you get all these movies mm -hmm. as opposed to going to theater, things like that. I, I, by the way, I'm speculating. I'm not sitting there saying, but I look at this thing. Would I rather invest in a Netflix, which is go out there and buy a lot of content plus make their own, or you have this Disney studio that's already notorious and has this major moat? We talked about the market cap of 160 billion. Mm -hmm. If I gave you 160 billion dollars today, you could not compete with Disney. Forget about. Forget about just getting rid of Disney. You wouldn't be able to compete with Disney, I think, with $160 billion. Yeah. That's a moat. Now, a lot of people disagree with me on that one. They say, Paul, that moat doesn't exist anymore. They're too woke. Look at the Okay, fair enough. But remember, when it comes to buying stocks, the, the stock is down. The story is never going to be good. 
The question is, is the story reasonable? Is it right? And I think you couple this and their, their Disney Plus potential with their profit margin. And I think there's a, lot, there's a lot different reality potentially down the road than what it is today. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, Mo. So bear cases, um, domestic parks and experiences segment income fell by 13% year over year. Operating income, operating, but the revenue was up. Operating income, yes. correct. Now, parks, experiences, products, business, post COVID operating income, but it's still below pre-pandemic. And a lot of that has to do with the hotel occupancy and attendance. To so to me, that's a temporary problem. Yeah, what's going on with their cruise lines? They're back up. They are? I are, think they Did they sell off any ships or anything? I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. That's probably in the 10K. 100% is going to be in 10K. I, I also, what else did I want to look at? I wanted to see some of, in the in the latest press release to see if there was any comments about their returning to the previous margins. Oh, yeah. Because listen, so, the mar- like we said, look at these margins, guys. I'll go through this. They made $12.3 billion in the year ending June 2019 on revenue of six point sixty four billion. That's almost almost 20%. The next year, the previous year, fifty-eight billion in revenue, twelve billion in profit, over twenty percent. Now, in past years, they had three, four, five percent profit margins, and guess what? It went right back up. So I'm looking at this, saying this is not a three or four percent business. This has got to be a business that can can, can sell at a higher profit margin, and that's what's key here. So while Mo's looking this up, let's pull up our eight pillars. It is ugly. And remember. If you have our software, you can customize your pillars up to 12 different pillars and four quadrillion different variations. I stick with our eight because I like them. But look at this, only one check mark, and that's revenue growth. Everything else is an X. Guys, the story here is bad. And if this was some, some company that was small and trying to get its way, I'd be like, ugh, but this is Disney. And that's what I'm banking on. The question is, though, is $88 <laughs> a reasonable price to pay for Disney? That is the question because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And we don't know what the cash flow will be in the future, but we have to make certain assumptions. But just remember that the best time to buy companies is not when the news is best. It's when the news is worse. But you have to remember that you have to figure out, is the news valid today? That is the hard part about investing. It is hard to stay separate from the news and say, is this valid or not? All right, let's see what analysts are saying. Analysts are expecting this year to make $3.76 per share and gain to $9.23 per share in the next three or four years. Big increases over the next four years. So even analysts, and again, take analysts with, remember, you have to sit there and remember that analysts have career risk and they want to be part of the market. But if you look at this, this is two and a half times for a company that people are out there saying this company is dead. Let's look at the revenue growth. Mid single digits, nothing major, about what's expected mid single digits, but still a growing company. So the question is, in those next three or four years, are they going to stabilize their expenses, increase their profit? Because a 48% gross margin, what does that mean? It means every extra dollar they bring in, 48 cents can go to the bottom line before taxes. 48 cents. That's pretty incredible. 48 cents. There are some software companies who are just a little bit above that. And software is a huge margin business. So I look at that saying, you know, this is a very important thing to remember about Disney. They have the experience. And yes, people say like, oh, people hate going to Disney. Listen, some people do. Some people love going to Disney. But some people, it's like a religion. People love that stuff. They do. I don't. So the question is, Whatever. what's the right price to pay for Disney? So guys, we're going to do the stock analyzer tool. I want you to remember our software, along with all of its tools, does a great job in helping to decrease the anxiety and stress of investing. It gives you the, the numbers approach to things, and it gives you that community of thousands of investors like you that you can talk to every day about your ideas. The entire conversation I had the other day about Disney was in our community. I'm very active. Mo's very active. We engage people, and you get all of these tools for about a dollar a day. So go to everythingmoney.com, check it out, sign up now. So Disney 10-year analysis, Mo. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you give me some assumptions, and we will go from here, and I'm sure we'll disagree on some assumptions, so let's talk through it all. So I did four, seven, and 10, and I realized 10 seems really high, but I think four is very achievable. Seven is pretty achievable. Let's do three, six, and nine then. Okay, because three I seems don't, low. Yeah, but, that's, but we're on the low side. But I don't think seven is reasonable for the mid number, but I think six is reasonable. Okay. Because I think that, so you're, you're, you go for it. Tell me. I do think that Disney is going to do other things to generate revenue. Like for example, they brought out Disney plus. That's, 
that's a big revenue driver. I think they can come out with other things from their other businesses that will drive revenue. Okay, but right now the 6% is still above what analyst estimates are expecting for the next five years. I know. So that's why I want to sit there and say- I just just think three- Actually, what I would do is three, three, five, and seven. Three seems so low. I don't think so. By the way, I think three is low, but I think that's what I want to do here. Okay. But I think for- Let's keep it. Now let's do this. No, I'll, 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 I'll let's keep do mine, this. you keep yours, and we'll show both Okay, screens. great. Yeah. Now what about profit margin? So the last 10 years, they've averaged 10%. Right. But it's declining here. So give me some numbers here. So I put in 6, 12, and 18. Okay. But 18 is with my 10% revenue growth, and that's assuming that they can get back to insane 20%. So you did 6, 12, and 18. Mm-hmm. I actually like that, but I'm going to go... 6.5, 12.5, and 18.5. Because I think 6.5... Oh, now, I'm going to stick with yours. 6, 12, and 18. Okay. I did the same thing for the free cash flow margin. Okay, good. Now, PE. Guys, ignore these PEs. Yeah. First off, only be, I mean, not only just because they're 70 and 275 and the price of free cash flow, what we believe is the market average is going to be 15 over long periods of time. So you should start at 15. If it's a high moat, high revenue growth business, high return on invested capital, you should pay more. And for the opposite, you should pay less. Now, this is not a high revenue growing business, but it's stable business with a very, very big moat, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So Mo, what are you putting for PE? So I put in 17, 20, and 23. I because actually agree with that. If they can get back to 18% profit margins, they're back to their... And I, and I think the minimum for Disney should be a, a, a premium to the market because yeah, exactly. it's Disney. Right. So now guys, desired <laughs> annual return. You can get nine or 10% from investing in a long-term ETF. So Mo, what returns do you want? I know what you're going to put for the lower one. 10. Yep. Yeah. And guys, the reason being is if you could buy Disney and make a 10% return and they completely collapse and do a crappy job for the next 10 years, you shouldn't be upset. Mm-hmm. What should, what did, what's the rest of them? Then I did 13 and 16%. Wow. See, I'm going to do 12 and 14. Okay. Now, remember, I did 10% revenue growth, 18% profit margin yep. for 16%. Oh, that's true. So, so guys, we're going to hit the analyze button. Mo and I are both going to go over our numbers. Stick with us for the entire video. Trust me, it's well worth it. And again, if you like the software, everythingmoney.com, check this out. We're going to hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 88 so I have a low price of 44, hoo-ha, <laughs> a middle price of 106 and a high price of 190. If you paid today's price and the lowest assumptions occur, you're going to make about 1%. If the middle assumptions occur, you're going to make about 14.5%. And if the high assumptions occur, you're going to make 25.75%. Big ranges because there's a lot of unknowns and we doubled the profit margin between the low and middle one. Mo, yeah. what do you got? So I have about 48 on the low end, 177 on the high 107 in the middle. So we're basically the same place there. Yeah. Even though we had different assumptions, same place. Guys, everythingmoney.com, sign up. Thank you very much for your time.